Hello guys, uh, in this video we'll be reacting to Salmonella Academy's free industrial surgeries and let's start. Hey kids, had a bad day? Well, could be worse. You could be living in a world without modern anesthetic. Today, we'll be talking about some surgical procedures carried out long before the development of medicine as we know it today. Now, once you go back a certain distance, the line between operation and mutilation is pretty thin. So, for our purposes, surgery refers to any bodily manipulation carried out with the intent of fixing some injury or illness. And away we go. The very first surgery that we have historical evidence for dates as far back as 6500 BC. It's called trepanning, which is a nice word for carving someone's frickin' skull open using nothing but a rock. Maybe a rock on a stick if you were lucky. In all seriousness though, you can see that a good deal of care went into the procedure, which lets us know that this isn't just the result of random injury. Many skulls even showed signs of healing around the holes, meaning plenty of the people who underwent this whole thing just got up and went about their day afterwards. Alright, hold on you say. This all sounds bad. Uh, guano insane. No way this was that common of an occurrence. Well, friend, if you've been watching this channel long enough, you should know that if you give human beings the benefit of the doubt, chances are they'll prove you wrong. In fact, so far, over. Uh, I've heard or have about this uh, procedure and, well, seen some uh, pictures of it, and it's really crazy. Uh, to think about this type of thing, you know, that it's about, uh, they do this procedure to some sort of take out the evil or take out the evil spirit or something like that when you have either migraine or stuff like that. It is some sort of normalized to just either hit or do things with your head to, well, out with a pain. 1500 Japan skulls have been dug up all across the globe, from Europe to China and even the Americas. This means that between 5 and 10% of all skulls that we've found from the Neolithic period have had at least one man-made hole scraped into them. To put it this way, based on that data, there's a greater probability of someone born in the late Stone Age having their brain matter exposed by some shaman with a chunk of flint than someone born in the USA being a redhead. To this day, nobody really knows why this was such a common practice but most theories tend to revolve around the idea of releasing some kind of dark supernatural yeah. force from the patient. Man, I'm getting real sick of all these evil entities infecting our minds and bodies. Huh, you can say that again. I tell you, I need these demons like I need a hole in the head. No way. <laughs> Fast forward to 600 BC. Over in India, there lived a guy called Maharshi Susruta. Now, this guy was a medical mastermind. He wrote a treatise known as Susruta Samhita, which described countless different conditions, treatments, and yes, even surgeries. One of which is the first recorded instance of rhinoplasty. That means nose job. A hornbill's a type of bird. I'm here too. Anyway, here's how it's done according to Susruta. First, you get them plastered, obviously. Second, you use a leaf to measure out the part of the nose you want fixed. Then, you use the leaf to cut off a flap of skin from the cheek or forehead of the patient. This part's important though, you gotta remember to leave a little piece of it still attached. Otherwise, you just got a chunk of dirty dead face meat on your hands. Now, wherever you're looking to stick the new flesh on, you rub that part raw with a knife. Also, you're gonna wanna stick two plant stalks in their nostrils so their uh -huh. nose keeps its proper shape. Slap the skin on, suture it, dust it with licorice powder for some reason, and cover it with cotton. Sesame oil should be regularly applied until the skin is fully healed. If you're like me, I already do that by default, so it shouldn't be an issue. Finally, at long last, your sniffer is reborn. Don't worry, you still look like a freak, just slightly less so. Moving on, our next surgery took place in 10th century. Uh, that was so gristic. And... I'm bad with gore and stuff like that, so imagining it mm, really grinds my gears as well. I have been uh, in a lot of well things like that, so I could imagine it more. Well, not really the scraping or stuff like that, but well, I've been around uh, well animals a lot and have well seen them uh, getting butchered and dying or even getting squished uh, a lot of the time so I could imagine how 
it look and how painful it is as i also have a lot of well injuries over the years uh, especially on my hands and well feet so yeah i could imagine at getting your skin uh, getting off your skin or getting sliced to be really painful as it became well i have seen a lot of it and it's bad you know because if you have been uh living with or well working with uh, animals and stuff you have probably seen not just animal injuries and stuff like that but also uh people injuries you know so yeah it looks bad and i guess it's much more on the imagining part i'm mostly okay with them uh in real life but the descriptions and stuff like that are what gets me you know Century Spain on Sancho the First of Leon, otherwise known as Sancho the Fat. Mm. Now, normally back in the day, having some meat on your bones was a sign of wealth and power and all that. But this guy was like TLC documentary tier mm. to the point where he could hardly function as a human being. So his constituents said, "Greetings, your thickness. Uh, yeah, you can't be king anymore on account of you keep breaking every horse we give you, and nobody wants to wash between your accordion-like neck folds no more." After his adipose got him deposed, Sancho decided to seek medical help for his condition under the oversight of well-reputed physician Hazdai Ibn Shapirut, which is an anagram for ha paintbrush aids. <laughs> now, if there's one thing that medieval man understood, it's practicality. Lap band, gastric bypass, belly balloon, these all exist to help people who don't have the self-control to stop eating so much on their own. But Dr. Shapadu didn't believe in beating around the bush. He said, well, why don't we just stop the patient from shoving food into his own greasy maw in the first place, and decided to just up and stitch the dude's lips together. After the operation, the only nutrients that Sancho received came through a straw, in the form of a mixture of is Thoraica, which was mm. it's bad enough that uh getting stitched but it's more on the fact that well i know for a fact that they don't have much on the uh painkiller things on back then i know they have drugs it's normal but the movement of the when you move your mouth, you could feel the movement of the strings or the, well, two. And it's mm, grinding my gears a bit. It was a complex blend of several herbs, fruits, and seeds, including opium. It was basically the... You know about how, uh, well, you have stuck uh, things on your, in between your fingers and stuff like that. I imagine that's how that feels, and it's bad. The closest thing you could find to lean at the time, and lean he became, losing around half his weight before ascending to the throne once more. So, this is the part of the video where I pander to the desires of the audience. If there's one thing I know you internet people can't get enough of, it's things going inside people's eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. The art of dealing with people's clouded lenses has been around for millennia, believe it or not. That Susruta guy from earlier actually talked about the most common procedure for cataracts for most of civilized history history, which is known as the couching method. Couching is done by taking a sharp object like a needle or a thorn and ever so gently stabbing their eye hole at weird angles until the lens moves out of the way. No lasers, no sedatives, no paralytics, just a rusty old pin and some elbow grease the way God intended. The majority of the time, this operation didn't work, usually just damaging the already blind eye irreparably. Shocker, right? And even if it did go as planned, you still, you know, didn't have a lens in your eye. So you essentially went from, I can't tell if I'm dead or not, to, ah, yes, it is quite yellow out today. By God. Something moved somewhere. A slightly more refined version of this operation is the suction method, which dates back to at least the 10th century AD, if not older. This procedure is described as requiring, quote, a large incision in the eye, a hollow needle, 
and an assistant with an extraordinary lung capacity. Though this reads like the setup to the world's most horrifying party trick, it's actually the bare minimum number of tools needed to completely extract the lens from the eye. In case you didn't pick up on how, here's a diagram. This method generally saw a greater success rate and fewer complications than its non-extracting counterpart, so hopefully you can sleep well tonight knowing that the number of human beings who have sucked a piece of somebody's living eyeball through a straw is above zero. Anywho, let's all just be thankful that we live in an era where procedures like these are a thing of the past. Now remember kids, even though the surgeries I described here do sound pretty easy to pull off, please don't try them at home. But if you do, please put it on live leak afterwards. <laughs> But you know what you can do at home? Learn stuff about things with Brilliant.org. Brilliant's elegant UI and step-by-step -step design makes learning seemingly complex topics very intuitive, especially for visual learners like me. Don't think you can understand special relativity? With Brilliant, I bet you you can. I'm just some kid in a room somewhere and even I got the basics. Check this out. Relativistic laser tag. Don't tell me that doesn't sound fun. Then later when you're talking to your friends, you can be like, Yeah, I'm taking a course in special relativity right now. No big deal. Maybe gonna hit quantum objects in a couple weeks. So to support me and broaden your understanding of math and science, go to brilliant.org slash salmonella and sign up for free. Also, the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Anyway, till next time, I'm Salmonella, and watch you for thanking. Wait, shit, I meant... <laughs> uh. And yeah, there are a lot of growth stuff in there, and uh, it this video really makes me uncomfortable. And yeah, that's well, I guess the end of the video. Uh, my name is Vagalia, and see you again on the next one. Peace.